of the uh, weekend, uh, we have uh, first thing to approve is the agenda, and we seem to have competing agendas. Uh, Libby, have you been sworn in? I'll sworn in. Okay, all right, so we're willing to do it. In view of the exchange of communications between myself and the superintendent over the weekend, next next month's agenda will have a vote of confidence or no confidence in the chairman and in the superintendent. First thing on the agenda is to accept the agenda, and we have two agendas. This is the first one. This is the superintendent's agenda. Excuse me, what do you mean by a vote of confidence? Superintendent. Be a vote of confidence. Confidence of what? As to whether or not this board approves the actions of the chairman or the superintendent, and one of us is going to have to have some relief. <clears throat> Are you providing previous notice in this meeting for that? I'm providing notice that. that I expect that to be on the next month's agenda. And this is the chairman's agenda. <clears throat> What is a no confidence? What does that mean? Can it's you what, explain that? It's what the board defines it as. Can you expand on that? I don't understand what what a vote the of purpose com is. Look it up. I don't have time to explain that. This isn't a debating society. Well, sir, you brought it up in the meeting. I just mentioned that that's what I expect to put on the agenda. I understand. <laughs> and you said we define it however we define it. It hasn't been defined, right? Okay. Well, then don't we need to define that before the next meeting? I'm sure it'll be on it. What will be the effect of that? Thing? What the board defines it to be. You're not suggesting that the board could fire him? I if certainly they, think they could if they wanted to. They can certainly set up the arrangements for dismissal. I don't know whether they could terminate him immediately. These, those are issues of law. But I think that's necessary, and I think one of us has got to. I'm willing to stand down. I'm tired of this. Well, if that's the case, let's do it tonight. I'm not ready to do it tonight. Oh, okay. Gentlemen, can I say something? Sure. I came in here fully intending to kind of be quiet and just get my feet wet tonight. But the people of Glasgow are watching this board. And nobody can put any confidence or any faith in this board if we can't agree on a simple agenda. I mean, let's be reasonable here. I agree. <clears throat> you two have got to find some common ground. Y'all should right. be making an agenda together. First time, first thing up is approve the agenda. We, this is not debatable issues. First thing up, we have two agendas. We have them in front of you. Uh, I'll entertain a motion, or I will create a motion to approve the superintendent's agenda, and then if that wins, if that is approved, the other one is dropped and lost. If it fails, we vote on the second agenda. <coughs> we can't have discussion at this point, right? We, have, I've, I've we got, have to have I've a motion. We have to have a motion on the floor. Okay, I've motion. Got a I will make the motion that we approve the superintendent's agenda. I'll second. We have a motion made and seconded. It is open for discussion. So I've got a question, um, and th this may be out of order considering we're talking about the first um, agenda, or the superintendent's agenda. I had requested that item number four in the superintendent's agenda be placed on the tentative agenda number two uh, back on Friday of last week and I had no response from the chairman regarding whether or not that was going to be placed on the uh, agenda and as, a, as an officer and a member of this governing authority I believe I have the right to place items on the agenda um, as I deem appropriate and I was just curious as to why that wasn't added to the super, the, I'm sorry, to the chairman's agenda. The, the first thing on the agenda is accepting the agenda. You may have an opportunity to add it when it comes up. <coughs> it's, it's a, it isn't, this is not a fixed agenda. It is accepted as we vote right now. Uh, and the first thing up is the 
is the chairman's agenda. If it passes, then the other agenda is moot. We dismiss it and we move on. So, if, so I can motion to amend the, the I motion. The motion, the motion was to approve the superintendent. That's the first yeah, that's motion. The, that is the motion is on the, the table. table. Okay. That's the first motion. Once we have dispensed with that, if it if it succeeds, then the other agenda fails. There's no point in going on with the second agenda. If the first amendment fails, then we go to the second agenda. That seems to be the rules of, of procedure. And the first... So I can uh, make a motion to amend the motion to move number four to the second item on the agenda. Is that correct? You can make the... Uh, yeah, move it to number three. Move it to wherever you wanted it. Yeah, number three. Well, you're voting on this one right now. Well, we're, we're voting on the first agenda, which is the superintendent's agenda. And number four is considered the advice of the council regarding errors and omissions. That is the first agenda. It is the superintendent's yeah. agenda. The chairman's agenda is slightly different. So you good with that tag where it is? Yeah, well, I just I want to, I just want to have a minute here to review the two, see what the differences are between them, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Looks like number two and number four could be considered the same. Well, well, you want you want number four <coughs> ahead of. Uh, Two and three. We want number four ahead of any action items. Well, you, you've got to approve the agenda. You can't move the know, get, actions up above the approval. Yeah, of that's, that's why I want to place it number three. Move it to number three. Instead of number four. Okay, I made that motion. Then. You want to put it before considering the minutes? Yes. Of previous meetings. Yes. Well, we don't normally do that, but well, I, I, I think tag that. Probably my comments or advice could come into play while you're considering the minutes of okay. the previous meeting. So okay. I, uh, I don't really think it would be necessary to uh, uh, to alter the, the, the number here because I think my comments would be appropriate when you are considering the minutes, approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Okay. Any other I'm, discussions? I'd like, to have, I'd like a question, please. Yes. Who is responsible for the agenda? <clears throat> that, that is the question you're deciding. Is it the chairman or is it the superintendent? Superintendent has asserted he writes the agenda, he's done it for X number of years, and that he's the one to write the agenda. Right. Well, that's not exactly what I asserted, DT. I asserted that it was my practice to propose a tentative agenda several days before the meeting and give all board members an opportunity to add things to the agenda. And that's not just, that's practice for one thing. Past boards have dictated that that's the way they want it done. But it's also, more recently, attached to an agreement we made with the city of Glasgow to publish the agenda in advance of the meeting to the public. Oh. So it makes it, you know, I'm, I'm bound by those previous board actions. Of course, you uh, in this present board are certainly capable of unwinding anything that past boards have done. But the, th the real crisis that I faced Friday was which, how to meet the terms of the agreement that this board, the previous board made to publish an agenda when I wasn't sure what agenda to publish. Uh, because some of the things that you deleted are things that need to be dealt with. And you know, the part of the flow of being the executive that you see things that we, the board needs to act on. And you know, for you to just delete those, I need for the board to act and tell me, you know, if my flow of business items are subject to being deleted, that's what the, if that's what the board decides, and that's what I, we'll live with. Well, um, the rules of order don't, does not give the uh, chairman of the board the sole authority to promulgate the agenda. 
It gives it the sole uh, authority to author the tentative agenda. The agenda is coming up right now, and anybody can add anything they want. Now, on Wednesday of this week, I sent out a note to everyone saying I wanted any items that you want on the agenda sent to me or sent to Amy now. I didn't get anything until Thursday afternoon when the superintendent's agenda was up. And I but sent you I can tell you that Robert's Rules of Order does not give you the authority to establish the deadlines. So it wasn't a deadline. It's, it's still right this minute. You can make a change right this minute. But will that not violate our agreement with the city on the previous agreement we had to supply the agenda so many days in advance? That's that's the question. We have, we, we voted to do that. I pointed out that we adopted Robert's Rules of Order, which supersedes any kind of agenda agreements. We are operating under rules that the, that the board is in charge of the agenda. <laughs> but, but when we originally reached the agreement with the with the city of the city council of Glasgow, you know, when we had Danny Basil and everybody was talking about all these things, one of the agreements was, of course, you know, to have so many days of the peak. Other other ones were to, uh, that we would supply an agenda so many days in advance, so for public consumption, so that people will understand what's on the agenda, so that they may attend this meeting in advance. And I think by not placing all of the items on the agenda and waiting until the meeting day to place those items on the agenda, I think violates the spirit of that original agreement. Spirit is, has nothing to do with it. We have no statutory requirement for the agenda. Yeah, right. We don't. There is a statutory requirement for special meetings, and they have to be put up and done. You're absolutely right. But in this one, there's not. And you have the opportunity to put it on any time. I know. But the reason are. that I asked for it, it needs to be put <coughs> out, and we would like, like to publish it. If you had something that was wanting on the agenda, the you had to had the right to do it Wednesday afternoon to send the items and the agenda. They would have been in it. I would have published it, sent it to Amy. It would have been out. I, instead of that, I got an alternate agenda. I don't think that the board operates under those rules. <coughs> the board has to operate on creating its own agenda. The agenda is what people vote on. If this board doesn't vote on what it wants to, then there's no point. This is an advisory operation. There is no point in being here. And, and I see your point. The, the, only, the only issue that I have with, with your line of thought is that there was a previous agreement that, we, that this board had with the citizens of this community and that was agreed to produce an agenda so many days in advance so that the public can consume that agenda and be present at this meeting if necessary. It would, have been, out, it would have been out Thursday afternoon had people sent me the stuff and well I sent you mine and it didn't show up on your agenda it didn't show up at all well, I, that was right. that did not show up until after the, the agendas were were already put up well I, once I saw that it wasn't on your agenda yeah. because I saw it on the original but I did not see it on yours so then I made the that, request that doesn't mean that you that. can't put it on the agenda when the agenda comes up if this first agenda passes that agenda is moot anyway right let's go ahead and vote on the first okay. one because sure. it's there if, All right, and we, have we, need a, to move on. we have a motion on the table. And a second. And a second for the acceptance of the superintendent's agenda. Agenda number one, you have a copy of it. Uh, if, it if it wins, it is the agenda for this evening. If it fails, we move on to the next agenda. Uh, have. Uh, Roll call vote. Tag. Aye. Yes. Uh, Jeff. Yes. Aye. Mr. Witcher. Yes. Libby. Yes. DT. No. passes the agenda is as you see it next up is the uh, is the uh, consideration of the minutes excuse me DT can, can't y'all have a discussion as Libby was suggesting that just to, uh, earlier as to 
how to avoid uh, this very issue that has come up, which would, to me, would involve you develop your tentative agenda, Billy develops his tentative agenda, or proposed things, and they become merged because you cannot possibly know the things that need all of the things that need to be addressed. If people will them. send them to the chairman, they will go on the on the and the concerns that people have should be put there. And I believe it's the chairman's and, 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 and you would not have the authority to say no that's not going on there. You don't have We sit authority. right here and vote on it. The, the majority decides what goes on this agenda. That's the way Robert's Rules works. First thing up is approval of the agenda. You get the opportunity to put it. All the attentive agenda is is what the chairman puts up. In this case, the superintendent puts up, and he's in charge of the agenda this evening. So, Well, if we're going to have an up or down vote on you two next month, it doesn't matter anyway, right? That's exactly okay, right. So let's move on. And it's okay. sad that but it's got to come to that. It, it is, but we've been here 15 minutes and we've now approved the agenda. We've got real business to do. Uh, and all in okay. front of the citizens of Alaska. The, uh, the minutes, uh, we have two sets of minutes to approve. Uh, one is for the uh, uh, February 19th. Uh, meeting. Uh, let's see what I have here. Uh, do I have here a motion to approve or uh, dispense with the uh, minutes of the February the 19th meeting? Your motion to approve? I'm not going to motion. I have a second. Second. Uh, I would like to consider adding an item uh, on the motion to accept the minutes of the February 19th meeting. I would like to amend to include the style citation of cause document read by the chairman into the record. I have a copy of it here that I will provide the clerk. Any other discussion? Well, could you read that aloud, please? I did read it aloud. It just didn't fit into the minutes. <coughs> if you would like a copy of it, right here it is. Yeah. Thank you. Could I see, see that just a minute? Have you got, have you got, yeah, uh, whatever. Did you? Read, I read that into the agenda on the 19th meeting. Or the read it into the record. I read it into the. I read it right here, word by word. It should be on the tape somewhere. It just didn't make it into the record. Yeah. Where would you want to insert it, Mr. Chairman? At the end, it doesn't matter. Probably in the termination, I guess, section. Termination superintendent. Okay. As a secretary, I guess I make that decision. It needs to be okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Motion is made. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. No, no, they, have 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 an an they have to have a motion for the amendment. This is if, 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 it carry, if it carries with the amendment, it's made. If it doesn't carry with the amendment, we take the amendment off and no, do it again. No, no the amendment first. first have to I thought we had to move to the program. Right. The minutes. Yes, that's what has to do. A motion and a second. No, you, to add a, an amendment, you don't need a second. You put it on. An amendment. All right. Requires a second. You, you, you move to a. Yeah. I've made a motion and it was second or second. Seconded to, it. You can't okay, then okay. add something without voting on that. Okay, I made an. Okay, I make a motion to amend to include this. Okay. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Uh, any other discussion? And you read this at that February meeting. I did. Okay. I 
Question? Any other? Question? Call for the Call question. question. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll vote aye. aye. Motion carries. Uh, Part of the record. The next item is to uh, consider the minutes of the March 15th meeting. Uh, do I have a motion to, uh, I'll make the motion to. Uh, 25th, March 25th. March 25th. Yeah. Okay. Uh, approve the minutes. Uh, if I have a second. Second. <coughs> second. Any discussion? I have some advice on the Sorry. Okay, let's uh, First of all, <coughs> I don't think a motion can properly contain two subjects. And your motion relating to Robert's Rules of Order uh, was to adopt them and <coughs> to change the rules to uh, make a supermajority 60% rather than two-thirds, which Robert's Rules of Order requires. Uh, so I don't, I don't think Robert's Rules of Order has properly been adopted because the motion contained two different subjects. Second, even if they were properly adopted, then to change the supermajority vote requirement requires a supermajority vote, which is two-thirds. So therefore, that motion fails. Oh, have you consulted yeah. a parliamentarian? They were included yeah. in the same motion. Pardon me? Oh, well, have you consulted a parliamentarian? They were included in the same motion. I think he's saying you can't have them in the same motion. Uh, I think that's, that's what I'm saying. Well, you have two different voting thresholds. I think you have, you have to have a supermajority. Yeah, there's two different voting thresholds. You don't thresholds. have to have a supermajority to adopt Robert's Rules of Order. No, but you have to have a supermajority to limit the powers of the minority. In other words, in order to set the supermajority at 60% rather than two-thirds. It was all voted at the same time. That, I know. And then that voted vote, out with a majority. That vote requires a two-thirds vote. In order to set the supermajority requires a two-thirds vote. I would recommend you consult a parliament. Well, no, I'm, I recommend what we're going to need to do tonight in order to clear this up. That's why I wanted at the beginning of the agenda was so that we, every other action that we take moving forward is not challengeable. We just need to clean this up. First thing we got to do is vote in Robert's Rules of Order again. Then we have to have another motion that votes in the supermajority at that point. That motion, that's out of order. It's not out of order. It's a point of order. It's out of order. Point of order. It's out of order. Now you, sir, under a point of order, you've got when to When I'm you gone, you can vote what you want. You have to address me. I'm the chairman. Under point of order, you have to address me. I'm listening to you. Okay. Well, it's, you're you're said it once. How agenda. many more times are you well, going to say it? Me I'm, I'm out of order twice. So I'm telling you a third well, time. Order. Of the day. It's on the system. agenda. We have to address it if TAG wants it addressed. That's right. What's on the agenda? Um, number four. Number four, consider advice of council regarding errors and omissions of previous meetings. We're considering, but that doesn't mean we have to change the rules. No. What I'm saying is, is that we have an improper motion, all right, which makes every action we take from that point on challengeable. We don't want that as a local electric plant board. What we need to do is clean that up. If we're going to have Robert's Rules, let's follow Robert's Rules. And under Robert's Rules of Order, in order to change the majority, in order to change the majority, it requires a two-thirds vote. We voted to change the majority in the last meeting because you had it as a subsidiary motion to your original motion. And only meeting the threshold of majority vote. That doesn't fly. That is not a legal motion doesn't work. This is nonsense. So you need some motions. This is absolutely nonsense. You're, not you're nonsense. running around in circles. You are, you are the ones you're that are the rules, a, and you don't understand You're creating a team. You're creating you a catch-22 where you can't do anything. No. I'm, I'm simply projecting. You may be in the minority at some point. You may want that same protection. Council, every, what's the, every, what's the every rule in here? Parliamentary, every our uh, council is not our parliamentarian. We don't have a parliament here. I understand. That. Okay. I'm just giving advice the best that I can uh, for you all to consider. We have to and clean this up. We cannot let I, we, I we cannot let a this discussion is out of order. It is not on the agenda. 
It is on the agenda. agenda. The agenda it's orders of the day. It, it is, is not on the agenda. Where yeah. does it say consider uh, errors and omissions? Where does it say Number anything four. about the rules? Errors and omissions in previous meetings. It was an error four. in a previous meeting. It is not on the agenda. DT, it's sitting right here, number four. Errors and omission does not say anything about the rules of order. It does. Where is, we we, we had an error in the previous meeting. Guys, I've had enough of this. Let's move on. Well, I'm sorry. Is this the only no. errors no. and omissions we have? No. Perfect. Counselor? Uh, no. <clears throat> there was a, uh, we added a provision to the Roberts Rules motion that they be in effect as long as it didn't conflict with state law. But there is no second. And the board didn't vote on it. First of all, this is a small small board. It doesn't require a second. No, no <coughs> motions require a second at a small board. You want to read that? It's right in here. Well, not to belabor a point, but that was also another subsidiary motion that you made in addition to your main motion, which was adopting Robert's Rules of Order. We'll operate under the, the provision that you will operate under the small business provisions of Robert's Rules of Order. All it takes is a majority and this is reversed. You can't see it. You keep you keep interrupting me. And and with the provision that we elect or that we move the supermajority from two thirds to sixty percent. You, you said that several times. I you want to say it again? But yeah, if I have to because I can get a vote if here. We have a me. sergeant at arms that will remove you from this room. I, I, listen, do your best, DT. Do your best. Last <laughs> time the sergeant at arms laughed at me. Do your best. Well, we don't have oh, me. And I may be out of order, but do y'all know how ridiculous this sounds to the people of the city? Well, let me. This is, no, no, wait just a minute. We're trying to make sure this wait, is correct. Wait just a minute. Let me finish what I'm saying, okay? The people in this city, this is what they're sick of. There is no agenda item on the table. We are listening to the council for his discussion of the errors and omissions, and that's the points that he's made. Let's proceed. That's right. Next, there was a uh, no search committee was formed, uh, even though the motion was passed regarding looking for that's correct placement council I'm just pointing that out to you next uh, on the uh, regards to the, uh, one of the Glasgow Daily Times complaints uh, we propose an amendment to that uh, the motion the amended motion did not get a second uh, discussion ensued and uh, even without a second. And uh, so that really wasn't passed. On the, the next item on the Glasgow Daily Times complaint, the original motion uh, in its amended form was never voted on. Never voted on. We responded uh, to the board's uh, what I viewed as the board's directive, even though the procedure on the vote was incorrect because we felt like the time, under the time constraints we were operating under, some response needed to be made. And that's why uh, I, a quote, response was sent to the Attorney General in accord with what you all had said, and the Attorney General promptly returned it to me saying that they didn't investigate matters of that sort. And I think I circulated a copy. You may don't you don't have a copy of it, but I sent a copy of what the AG sent me. So those are my comments about the minutes that are before you. And the, I would point out that minutes are the purpose of minutes or to record what actually happened at a meeting, not what you thought you were doing. You, you don't change them to reflect uh, what you really intended or, or, uh, or what you thought you were doing. So those are my comments on Do you have recommendations as to how we remedy 
we have uh, the first problem. Uh, it, one response is from the small boards, page uh, 488 of Robert's Rules of Order. Motions, and this is for a small board, motions need not be seconded. Uh, is there any motions that we need to make in regard to these? Well, this is the, that's one of the reasons. See, I wasn't aware of that. That's one, and you know, not knowing, studying Robert's Rules of Order the night that we voted on it, I would have had no way of knowing. <laughs> but um, that's another reason why I think we should have had some discussion, and those should have been separated out as separate motions, because we need to have an understanding of what we're getting into by adopting the, you know, the, the you small organization rules. You cannot operate a contentious board without rules of order. I understand. It just will not work. We voted on Robert's Rules of Order. What I'm trying to get at is we need to have a clearer and better understanding as to what we're getting into when it comes to the small organization rules. Uh, I, didn't, I never had an opportunity to in that meeting, Mr. Mr. Chairman. That's the point. Two months. Not in that meeting, but it was voted. And so what I'm getting at right now is is that in order to clean this up, we need to revisit we're not those going action to do items. That. I'm sorry? We're not going to do that. That's not on the agenda. Well, there's I'm, nothing I'm, on the I'm agenda that says that. Now that we've heard from council I heard that we have an error, I'm going to request that we place these items on the agenda so they can be voted. Maybe on. next time. You can't open the agenda now. It requires a, two, it, it requires there's a, a super majority to open the agenda if there is, after it's been adopted. It's if, been adopted. If there is an error and a point of order, which is I'm making an out of a point of order. You're if out of order. order. I'm not. If I'm making a point of order that we are now... Well, now this is why we can't go anywhere. You just keep talking. That our decisions are now... If there, all of our decisions moving forward are not conforming to the, are the rules that we have passed. Yeah. All right? Then and you're out of order. If you don't stop, I will ask that officer. You I'll ask for a vote. Can I get a vote on whether or not we can <coughs> shut down Mr. Tagg's discussion here? That's the first thing up. All in favor? Aye. Nobody else? Keep talking. Okay. Thank you. All I'm trying to do, Mr. Chairman, is to make sure that we follow the proper rules and procedures that we have set forth ourselves. That we're not that we're not You said that several times okay. already, Ty. So How many I, times do you want to say it? So what I'm asking you to do. I what said I'm no. asking this board to do. <laughs> You're out of order. This is not on the agenda, and we have to get the rest of the agenda done tonight. When you put it on the agenda, put it on next month's agenda. Try to put it on this month's agenda. You ignored it. You had the opportunity. We voted this in to vote it up. That's what number four is. Yeah. That is not it. It is it. If we have no we have to correct the number four. The error. Number four does address the error made. It says consider advice. It does not say do anything. Look, we don't even know what the advice was going to be. And you can't I'll vote, be, you I'll can't have something have, on the agenda that's in somebody's mind. I'll be happy to have the council go ahead and tell us what his advice, what he thinks the advice, what our advice is. This is, is, us, this is completely about. out of order. We're going to be here all night while you talk. Mr. Froge, you just don't like what I have to say. You keep saying it. I know. You keep saying it over and over. We've already heard it. It's important. You only get one round at this. You, you give you everybody's advice. This is not a debate. It's, it's not an argument. That's exactly what this is. Discussion this is a debate society. society. <laughs> exactly what this Let's is. Let's move on to number five, please. Well, we, well, I'll just tell we you still you have to listen to his advice. This agenda now, uh, as you said earlier, by a two-thirds vote. We have to have a two-thirds vote to open the agenda. Okay. No, we actually have yeah, two-fifths. We have a supermajority of 60%. Three people vote for opening it and listening well, to this. We can do it. That's 60% under. Uh, I've said what I always okay, say. It if takes a supermajority to change the supermajority. Uh, That's all I'm trying I, to address. What more can I say? Okay, well, we can't open the agenda. The agenda requires a supermajority vote. Well, but that would also mean that anything else that we move on tonight would then be um, done challengeable. Terrible. Challengeable. It's exactly so, right. So what kind of a vote do we need to have to open this and get this moving forward? To, to, to change, to modify the agenda? Yeah, I believe so, right? Yeah, to we'll take a motion to, uh, Three add, to add an item to the agenda. 
uh, and then that would require, I think, a two-thirds vote okay. because I think the 60 percent supermajority uh, amendment that uh, DT proposed at the last meeting was invalid because, as I've said several times, to change the supermajority requires Takes a, super a supermajority okay. vote. Yeah. So you, all right, a motion to amend the agenda. Yeah. I think I, I'm, I'm going to move to suspend the rules and amend the agenda. We have a motion to suspend the rules and vote. I'll second. Uh, wait a minute. You have to say what you're voting on. Yeah. What what you're suspending the I rules? I move that we suspend the rules to amend the agenda to consider changing or to consider voting on Robert rules of order and. The subsidiary motions for adopting the small business, the small organization provisions, and setting the supermajority at sixty percent. So you're you're voting to throw out Robert's rules of orders. No, he's, he's I'm voting to separate that into three separate motions, three separate action items. Vote on Robert's rules. Vote on small small uh, small uh, organization provisions and the supermajority. Okay. I'm going to clean rules, that motion up. I'm Robert's rules. What's the other? Adopting the small organization rules, uh, Robert's rules for small organization, and setting the supermajority at 60%. So to accommodate. It's the original motion. It's just set in three separate motions because there are three separate voting thresholds that have to be met. Not to, no, it's not. A majority sets the rules. DT, in order to set the supermajority at 60%, that requires a two thirds vote. In order to I'll adopt I'll Robert's I'll rules of order. The, under the rules we have right now, it just takes 60 percent. But that, but that's what I'm saying is that, that motion error was, last not, month. was erroneous. You're saying, what, Mr. Herbert, what you're saying is it takes a supermajority to change the supermajority. Yes. So we didn't We never error. had the rules until we made that supermajority. Well, actually, we adopted Robert's rules no, we first, and they, they were all part of one motion. Exactly. Which is not, Which met, that's what he's trying to say. You're saying the rules are, you think, you're saying the rules are not valid. Well, that's why you shouldn't right. have two subjects in, in the same motion. In one motion. That's all I'm saying. We just have two, we, get, we need to go back and revisit each one of those separately, is all I'm saying. Pass Robert's rules, then let's look at the other two motions. That's all I'm, all I'm getting at. We just got to clean it up. We can't have two separate motions that have two separate voting okay. thresholds. Okay, so you made a motion. We have I've a motion. It. Right. I've seconded it. We have a motion on the floor to remove Robert's Rules of Order, the small... Uh, That's not the motion. Well, you have the to remove it before we... To amend, amend the agenda. To amend the agenda. To amend the agenda. Okay. All right. We amend the agenda to... revisit the I don't you say revisit we have to have a motion we can't just sit here all night and argue over what the motion is visit revisiting doesn't do us anything we have to have a motion on the floor and you have a motion you made to, a motion to to vote on those three items separately well, we vote, what's the vote we, need, we don't know what the vote is well, could, we, I, could I add something here all right he's, he's moving I think as I understand it to amend the agenda I understand so that. as to consider those three items now, that's the first thing that you got to get the agenda amended before you can then vote right. on those items that he wants the agenda expanded to embrace okay, okay. So let's, let's, have, let's, on let's, have a, let's have a motion as to whether or not we want to amend the agenda to vote on the rules of order. Is that acceptable that's motion? Right. That's right. If we if we do it, we're going to be redoing visiting the, the rules of order. And we're going to vote on the separate items all the way up and down, which I don't see a problem with, but somebody else does. Okay, the motion has been made, it has been seconded, it is on the floor for discussion. Any discussion further? I don't believe there's any discussion on a, an amendment, is there, to an agenda? Maybe there is. This is a, this is a motion to amend the agenda, and you certainly can discuss it. Okay. Mr. Chairman, could I you say something? I just want to repeat what I said when you all were considering adopting Robert's Rules of Order before. 
Um, I said I thought that it would result in spending more time arguing over procedure than addressing the very serious substantive issues uh, with which this board uh, has to deal. And I think tonight has proved me dead right. For, for a couple reasons. One, Ms. Short, you said we're in front of Glasgow. But, but I think anything that stifles discussion, we need a free exchange of ideas. This is the only time to talk. That was my whole point why I didn't think Robert's rules was a good fit before. But in all fairness to you, you're, you're going to have to play by these rules too. Let's let's go ahead and vote this again, That's and, and and then move on with this so we can. My view is if we throw out these rules, which is what we're basically doing, that we go into chaos. We cannot vote anything. We're going to continuously not be able to vote. We're not going to be able. I think it's absolutely absurd to wipe out rules that we have in order who are operated by every board in this country. Uh, they are without rules, rules, that's without, rules, without rules, rules, we have chaos. If we have a congenial group, you can have no rules. But when you have a contentious group, it isn't going to work. Well, the ironic thing is, is that we didn't follow the rules in passing the rules. <laughs> so we need to go back and follow the rules in order think, to pass the rules. I think we'll have a, an expert parliamentarian tell us what we did. I think that's but we still have to nonsensical. address this. We still have to address this this evening. I think it's nonsense. We, we were just about yeah, to vote on that. that. Yeah. Vote, voting on the agenda to open up the rules of operation of the board. Uh, I think it's time to have a vote, and it's time to to uh, have a uh, roll call. Tag. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Libby. Yes. Mr. Witcher? No. DT? No. Okay, we don't have a super majority, but we do have the two thirds or the three fifths majority. So I guess under the rules that we are operating under, we open it up and we do it again. So I guess we have to unwind. We vote on Robert's rules. Robert's vote on Robert's rules first, and then what? As a what valid the motion, right? And then the majority. <coughs> okay. Uh, moving the super majority. So I move. I move that we adopt Robert's rules of order, eleventh edition. Do I get a second? I'll give you a second to that. Okay. Have a vote. All in favor? Any more discussion? Ms. Lowry, if I might ask. This is out of order. You can't do that. Well, only this board discusses things. Yeah, but she and we have a motion on the floor. Well, I mean, she's got a right to ask. I think she, she's probably going to ask what the city council does. Exactly. As as that's just what I was going to do, yes. We have, a, we have a motion on the floor. You get to express your views here. Well, wait a minute. She that was, was part of discussion. Some yeah, that was part of discussion. I just wanted that question clarified for me. So, would any of you gentlemen be kind enough to tell me what rule of order the city Glasgow City Council follows? I can tell you they do not. Water. Thank you. They do. They do not. Do not. Okay. That was all I wanted to know. What about uh, any other uh, water company? Entity in the city that I've, or the governmental entity with which I've had anything to do with has adopted Robert's Rules of Order. General parliamentary procedure, but not officially yeah, Robert's Rules of Order. They will adopt their own rules. Okay. Or something, or something. For instance, uh, the city used to have, I'm not sure whether they still have it or not, a uh, provision that the uh, agenda of the mayor was promulgated on, th no, Thursday. I think you had to get in. Is that still in effect, Paul? What's that? Uh, are you still required to uh, get matters into the city by Thursday before Monday meeting? We usually get our agenda on either Thursday or Friday. But that's, uh, and that's been 
to my knowledge, the rule for a long, long time. And we go by Robert's Rule of Orders. But, but no, the city doesn't go by Robert's Rule of Orders. Okay, any other discussion? Motions on the floor to adopt, adopt Robert's Rules of Order. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Aye. carries. Got that done. So now second order is uh, uh, setting the supermajority at 60%. Now that we've adopted Robert's Rules of Order. I, I make a motion. That now you're going to say that we have to have four votes for that. Right? We do. Make a motion that we use the small board. Uh, uh, I just made a motion that we set the super majority. Super majority at uh, 60 percent. Two thirds. Do we have a second? I uh, give you a second on that. Discussion and question, I guess. So we're 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 voting on changing the super majority, which is means From in order to stop. Out of five. Yeah, four out of five versus three out of five for stopping debate and or uh, changing the rules, uh, whatever. Now, I got some discussion on that. Robert's Rules of Order makes it very clear, very clear that it's a, it's very important to protect the, <coughs> I'm sorry, to protect the uh, rights of the minority. Um, one of the ways that you do that is to make sure that any bylaw changes or anything that affects the rights of the minority. Actually, we don't have to do that. It is that already in Robert's Rules of Order, the two-thirds majority. You don't have to do anything. You don't need a motion. I understand, but there, there is a motion yeah, no, but you on the table. It's a motion to change it, though, right? There's a motion to change it. Okay. So a, ver a vote in the affirmative changes from? Two-thirds to 60, which goes, in my opinion, goes against the spirit of Robert's Rules of Order altogether. Sure. So your um, motion is what? To change the supermajority to what? Well, matter Robert's of fact, Rules of Order I, calls I'm for a two-thirds I'm going to rescind my motion. Okay. Okay, and what was the other one? We operate under have, the small board rules? I have small board I have not made that motion. Well, small board rules meaning they are just, a, just a motion and no second? Is that what you're referring yeah, to? At this well, point, you have adopted Robert's Rules of Order, not the small board. Right. The small board rules right. are, are more congenial. You don't have to stand up. You don't have to defer to uh, when, you want to, when the chairman wants to vote. You don't have to uh, have seconds. Uh, you can discuss almost unlimited, which is some people here seem to like to do. So that's that's in the small board rules. Can you interrupt? You seem to. Well, what some people here would like to <laughs> yes. seem to do. <laughs> it's, it's a lot more. It's a lot more congenial. Uh, <coughs> do I have a motion that now, we is that where the wait a minute, is that where the uh, lack of a second is required? Yeah, you don't have to have a second for a vote. No. There's not real much need for a second because if you don't have a second, you don't have any votes anyway. Well, that's one way to look at it. I guess. <laughs> there's, been, yeah. there's been several times that we've things have failed for lack of a second, and tonight and there, are, have there are mistakes in in a small board. If you don't get a second, the world doesn't crash, it doesn't burn, and you right. haven't made a mistake. I, I think you know the, the Roberts Rules of Order for small boards is designed for a, sure. a, a more congenial operating environment. I'd like to table that to the next meeting so that I have an opportunity to study a little bit. And I think that's going to be best for all of us if we want to study exactly what the ramifications of that are. All right. I'd like to table that to the next meeting. All right. The next motion. Please stand when you make it. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it says, boys. Uh, uh, Robert's uh, Rules of Order is very formal. <laughs> All right, so moving on to number five. Thank goodness. Y'all ready? Okay. <clears throat> so, Ms. Mitchell, in a normal meeting, uh, this is the usually early in the meeting where we just give you some background both financial and operations wise about how this big business has done. We're usually looking back 
Which this is the April meeting, but the month of April is not finished yet, so we're a month behind. So most things that I talk about are going to be for the month of March. Uh, with the exception of this one, which is uh, there is a monthly uh, changeable fuel cost adjustment that is issued by the Tennessee Valley Authority. Uh, it runs about three months behind their actual experience. You know, if it's been exceedingly rainy, like, like it has been, the fuel cost adjustment usually goes down because rain is free fuel. Uh, they have a big hydro operation. Uh, and so the more rain they get, uh, the cheaper the fuel cost is. Uh, also, if they have a month uh, where usage is way below their estimates, then there'll be, that'll have a positive impact on the fuel cost adjustment because they put money into the budget to buy power from neighbors that they didn't have to buy. So that's what this is about. So uh, May the 1st, the fuel cost adjustment will go to 1.658 cents per kilowatt hour, which is a small decrease, and it becomes the lowest fuel cost adjustment for May in the last decade or so. We usually put that up there just because it does actually alter the rates and so i always feel like whenever anything is done to the rates the board needs to be apprised of that and that's why we do that every month uh this is a, another this is a section where i go through and use some of the tools that we have analytics tools to uh, take some broad looks at uh, how we're doing uh this this set of charts right here you'll notice there's 12 of them uh, and there's multiple colors on each one. Those are years. So we've got about seven years worth of data up here, and we're looking at uh, March right now. Uh, so that's the last one uh, on here that we, you know, that has new data. And load factor is an important measure to the utility. It's the ratio of energy that we sold to the peak energy that we had to buy. So the higher, the better. You know, all utilities wish they had 100% load factor, but they're never going to have that. Uh, we, uh, you know, for March, cruised right just below 70%, not nearly as well as we did in March of 2018, uh, which you can see right there, at much higher line. But in general, Glasgow is one of the best performing utilities among the 154 utilities that sell TVA power. Uh, that is a good thing because the higher our load factor, the lower our net power cost is from TPA because the ratio of energy to demand is favorable. So we're doing pretty good. Uh, right now in April, we're, we're right at 70%, so that's pretty good as well. Uh, uh, let's see. So this, looking back at March, this is how we did, well, there's one of these lines for each day in March. So 24 hours in the day, uh, that shows every day in March. And those blue lines right there are days when we predicted a potential peak demand. So you can see that in March, we only had to do that twice. Uh, and those peaks were considerably over this green line, which is what the peak demand, peak day looked like in 2018 for March. So uh, what does that tell you? It tells you that on the 5th and 6th of March, we were much colder than usual, and we had two days that could have easily been the peak day, and one of them was. So we had a successful month. We called two peak days. Uh, under our agreement with the city, we're allowed four per month. So we only had to use two, and it was accurate. So that means that we didn't uh, incur any additional cost by missing the peak. The problem with using four, uh, or however many we use, uh, if we, we have agreed, uh, again, part of that agreement with Dan Basil uh, and the city, was that people would only pay based on their, their uh, their contribution to the highest peak within one of the days that we predicted. So if the actual peak occurs on a day that we didn't predict, <coughs> then we have incurred a big loss because we've got to pay TVA whether we predicted it or not. So you'll, sit, you'll hear that discussed uh, from time to time. I wish it wouldn't, but 
But, you know, out of 12 months, we'll probably miss it on four or five months. Not by much, but we'll miss it by some. Uh, okay, this is a report I've been doing every month. We have this uh, uh, voluntary system called a Roundup program where we try to convince people to allow us to round their bill up to the next highest dollar. You know, if the math comes out that your bill was $87.14, if you subscribe to the Roundup program, it go, becomes $88. And that money that's produced, we give directly to community relief. Out of about 8,000 customers in Glasgow, we have 207 that uh, voluntarily uh, make that contribution. So it's pretty undersubscribed. Uh, the board has asked me in the past to ramp up the marketing on that. We've done that. Uh, at the end of the year, we felt like our community relief was kind of in crisis mode, and we had just been paying them once a year at the end of the fiscal year. So we made a payment for halfway through the year just to get them out of crisis mode. And that's where we stand now. Uh, Okay, Mr. Chairman, that brings us to the next item on the agenda. That's the end of my operating report, unless anybody has any questions if they want me to answer about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is to consider the appointment of a committee recommending replacement of the board council. I would uh, like to move that we rescind the motion of the March meeting forming a search committee, since we don't have a large choice, to find a replacement of our retiring council and retain the services of Ron Hampton to act as co-counsel working with Mr. Herbert until retirement in June. That's an amendment. You're moving to amend the agenda. No, this is this is considered the appointment of a committee. Of a committee, yeah. and I, I, what you just I am said. voting to rescind that. Okay, that I can do that. We'll have to have so a vote on it, though. Right? Well, yes, that's... we will have to. It's a motion to rescind the motion of the March meeting, forming a search committee to find a replacement for our retiring council. So you're first, your... you have to move to um, to amend the agenda, as we did earlier, as you did earlier, and that requires a supermajority vote. Can't be done. That means. Mayor, a motion. Make a <coughs> change Excuse back me. to Make the motion. The, the change of the rules allowed us not to be able to vote on any changes, unless there's more than several that want to do it. Two people cannot change. Three people cannot change the rules. Okay, we're here. Do I have a motion? I think uh, a motion. Mr. Witcher moved. What was the motion? He, he made your motion. He, you said you entertained a motion, he made the motion. Okay, we have a motion. <clears throat> to rescind the motion of the March meeting to form a search committee, which is what we're reconsidering the committee. And second. I have a second. Uh, here's a copy of it. Thank you. Any discussion? So to my understanding, there was a feeler put out to attorneys in Barron County who might be interested in this position, correct? That is correct. Uh, I got access to the whole uh, email list for the Bar Association and sent a letter to each of them. I uh, got two positive responses, one from uh, Ron Hampton and one from Brian Pack. Got a few other apologies. Thank you for thinking about me, but I'm not interested. Might <laughs> <laughs> good for my career at this time. Yeah. So out of only two responses that would be willing to that? I honestly don't feel we need a committee if we've got only two responses from Barron County attorneys. <clears throat> well, that's not what we're talking about. Right now we're talking about amending the agenda. Okay. We'll get to that in a minute if we get amended. <laughs> 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 uh, 
But right now we got to vote on whether or not we're going to amend the agenda. Okay. So we got discussion on amending the agenda. So and then we'll also need a vote on however we want to handle those right. two interested. Well, if it. If, if, DT, if DT's motion passes, right. if, if we vote to amend the agenda and DT's motion passes, then Ron Hampton will take over as board attorney. Right, right. We've got to Co -counsel. Co -counsel. Let's do Co that. Let's, Sorry. Let's if it doesn't, then right. we've got to, yeah, right. we've got to move through okay. the process. We have a motion on the, on the uh, table to amend the rules to allow voting on this motion to rescind and to uh, our, um, well, that's you can't have two though. What? Well, isn't that two different? I said, well, we need to we, we need to amend. When you amend the agenda, you have to state the purpose of the amendment, and the purpose <laughs> of the amendment is to create this amendment. Okay, so we have a vote on amending the rules. Have a have a roll call vote. Tag. Uh, no. Jeff. Yes. Mr. Witcher? And we're doing what now? <laughs> we're, we're amending the rules so we can vote on this. Okay, yes. We, I vote to. Yes. Libby? Yes. DT, yes. The rules are amended. The motion is to rescind the motion of the March meeting, forming a search committee to find a replacement for our retiring council and to retain the services of Ron Hampton to act as co-counsel working with Mr. Herbert until retirement in June. Have a second? Second. Have a second. Discussion? I don't think we, this vote is to actually hire Ron Hampton. It's to, it's to. Uh, I, we're not ready for that and I think we need to first explore whether there is a pre-existing conflict given that he was representing you earlier Keep and he is to be the we, we are hiring a board attorney not not an extension of the chairman's attorney so that's that's a no go I would, I would point out that the only services ron hampton has ever ever offered to me was when i got a charge by the glasgow daily times that i violated the opens and he was the only attorney i could find in this whole town that would write a response that does not make him my attorney uh, well, but, but I beside the point, can. I think we need to have, listen, the more information you have in any decision of this magnitude, the better. There's and not a lot of people that want this job. But there, are two, there, are two, there are two. There are two. two, there, are two. There, are two. Right. there are two. I think at a bare minimum, we need to at least have discussions with both as a group. And I think you're right, Lib. There's probably no need. It's superfluous to have a right. committee at this yeah. point. But I think we probably need to bring them both in in closed session and have a discussion with them, uh, at least regarding, you know, what their qualifications and how they feel about certain issues. At the next meeting. At the next right. meeting. I have, yeah. I have a motion on the floor to uh, adopt the motion as made. Do you need further discussion? All right. We'll have a roll call vote. Tag? Wait a minute. We're voting. We're voting the for the motion that's motion. right here. Yes. So my vote's a no. No. Jeff? No. Mr. Witcher? Yes. Libby? Yes. DT? Yes. Motion carries. Item on the agenda. Okay. Uh, consider the GDT complaint and is that it? No. No, actually, it's, it's the programming. programming. It's the programming committee. Something less than something. Uh, okay. So we had two vacancies last meeting. You all reappointed Carl Napier to a new three-year term. Uh, in the meeting and on TV, we asked for people uh, to let us know if they were interested. Uh, I got one interest and I had to call her and ask her if she was interested. So it wasn't a proactive deal, but I talked to Melanie Azrael and uh, she said she would serve if we wanted her to. That's all I can produce for you. I'm not saying there's not a hundred people out there that wouldn't. I just didn't hear from them. <coughs> so uh, that's what I have for you. You directed me to find somebody and I found you somebody. I have a motion to accept Melanie as the... Uh Appointing. I'll take. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. So the action on the Glasgow Daily Times issue 
uh, happened yesterday, actually, uh, when we got a notification from the Attorney General's office the, that I forwarded to you all. Uh, but most of it, I think 44 pages, was just a copy of the uh, complaint. <clears throat> and a lot of that was copies of stuff you all are very familiar with. Uh, but I think the action item in here is that if the agency wishes to respond, please refer to this, and they're telling us that we have uh, three days. Your response must be received no later than Wednesday, April 24, which is tomorrow. So you all need to decide whether you want to offer any response to this. This is you. finally perfecting the, uh, the complaint. Is that what happened? Yeah, I think that's what happened. Yeah, but we don't have to respond to that. Uh, they're, yeah, they're offering, this letter is offering you the opportunity. I don't think. To add more response. material. We've already added what we wanted to add. Well, if somebody else wants to add something, fine. I'm sorry. Say it again. This is a notification from the Attorney General's office that the Glasgow Daily Times complaint has been perfected. That is, they have actually submitted a complaint now. Yeah, and they're offering us an opportunity to they're giving us fair warning. We're going to rule uh, if you all have anything to say about it. Okay. Speak now or so. I'm just, so does our previous <coughs> responses that we submitted to you, do they still stand or do they need to be resubmitted? Or? This is an appeal. Not a, not the it's an appeal to the Attorney General, yes. Uh, and they have our perfect denial of their complaint originally. Our denial. Yes. And uh, the, the, I don't know what we would, <clears throat> we have already submitted to the Attorney General, and I think it's attached. Of course, they sent it back. Pardon me. Yeah. They sent what you submitted back. Back. But the Daily Times, in turn, Attached. incorporated that into their complaint. Right. So our response already. is already in there. Well, if you don't look at it that I, way. I don't know that we ever responded as a board. <clears throat> I think you no. responded. All, all I did, I there were some other responses. Yeah. Well, the, 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 I don't know who ever responded. The requirements of the law is that the chairman responds. No, the requirement is that the board. No, it says chairman. I've read it a couple of times. The chairman is to transmit it, but it has to be a board decision. Well, if they, there's a three day response time, it's not generally enough time to allow the board to respond. I've said all I have to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, any action, any motion anybody wants to make on this? If not, we'll move on. Well, wait a minute. So, what does that imply then? We're basically denying, we're, we are well, denying I, at whole, at, we've at, already at whole that there has not been a violation. They're, they're making an, <clears throat> an appeal to our decision to reject this to the Attorney General. The Attorney General will rule sometime, hopefully, as to whether or not it's valid. And then we'll get back to us. So there will be no more, no further response from us. Then, that's what I'm saying. That's right. That's you're, right. you're not okay. You're not no. individually responding for us. No. There will be no further no, response. No further response that I know of, unless okay. there's something that someone wants to do. I don't see any need for anything else. Uh, the reports. Are we ready for those? I have a few. Are. Yes. Okay, these are pretty straightforward. Uh, at the last meeting, I was directed by the board to uh, reiterate to the Barry County Progress that we demand that they retract the story they did where they printed completely uh, erroneous information about our rates. Uh, I did that, and there has been still been no retraction. So I just want to feel moved that you all need to, to know what the outcome of your order was. <coughs> You either decide to do something more than demand a retraction, or you decide to shrug and say, Have okay. any motions on the floor? Any motions? Anybody? Um, well, uh, this is, this is under, okay, never mind, sorry. Um, 
You know, we voted last time, three out of five, I believe it was, me and Jeff and Marlon voted last time to request the, re the retraction because I think we all saw that it was serious enough that you can't let, I don't mind responsible journalism. I mean, I stand by whatever my decision is here and whatever action this board takes, stand by it, even if I don't agree with it, it's a decision of the board. But when you started blurring ir irresponsible uh, tactics in journalism and it starts having an effect on the employees of this organization then you start getting to the point to where you can no longer operate efficiently and effectively because you can't hire the best people and I can tell you through just from conversations myself with various members and employees of this organization that um, there are many that can't wait until they retire <laughs> There are several that are going to take positions elsewhere because of the simple fact that when they go out in public, people are treating them badly. And nobody wants to work where they're treated badly every day. And that is a direct result, in my opinion, of some misinformation that's been promulgated um, throughout um, various and certain members of the media. So I think we have to take a hard line stance on this, that if you're going to report on us, report. It's fine. We, we stand by what we do, what we do and what we say. But let's at least get it right. And uh, let's make sure that people are going to get angry over the right things. Let's make sure they're not going to get angry over erroneous information. So I think we've got to take a stand. I think we have to draw a line in the sand at this point and uh, make sure that we uh, communicate <coughs> to members of the media that you can report on us, but you better report the right information. You can't knowingly report in erroneous information. And you know, when you, and I, I know I'm not going to bring Melinda in this, but I, I know from just watching television uh, that uh, you have to corroborate your information if you're going to report it in a, you know, in a, uh, a newspaper. And if you only have one source, that's not cooperation. So uh, I think we're well within our rights to request that retraction. I think we're well within our rights that that retraction is not yeah, granted. That we have an option uh, to take further measures necessary to make sure the proper information is promulgated. I would point out that we've already had a request for a retraction and a rejection. Right. I don't see that there's anything else that we could actually do. And I well, we can litigate. Well, the, we can do the damage we can goes, litigate. Damage can goes litigate. further right. than just the EPB. You As can't I said litigate last against time, the press. That's this, the silliest thing I've ever every, heard of. Every, every recruitment effort in this community, Who's that liable? information... Who is liable here? We'll let a competent court of, juris competent court of jurisdiction decide that, but in my opinion. But I, but I do believe that we have cause. Um, we felt strong enough to ask for a retraction because we thought there was harm. If that retraction so was... So we're going to see the progress to get them to do what? Issue of how much money issue we of want to spend? How much money we want to spend trying to get the progress to print something else? All they're going to do is print something worse. We'll issue. A, we'll ask for a retraction. We'll ask for a judge to ask for a, to demand so a retraction. Can't do that. You can't. We can. Hey, we can negotiate. We, but if Mr. Herbert, no, do we have any chance of re recovering or stopping the progress from saying anything it wants to? Yes, depends on what uh, what they say, and a court or a jury would have to decide whether the uh, clearly erroneous uh, and, and defamatory, facially defamatory statements that were uh, in the progress uh, rise to the level of allowing us uh, money damages or some sort of equitable relief. Well, let me finish up what I was saying. First of all, the, the damage goes beyond just the EPB. Uh, we have a, a, a recruitment effort here for outside industry, and this just gives the whole the town a black eye. I mean, the, the information reported is wrong. The next thing is you stated in the last meeting you said, well, how can you, um, how can you damage a monopoly? But you, we all know the biggest the most profitable part of this whole operation is not a monopoly. The broadband is more profitable than the whole electric division, and that is clearly not a monopoly. So I think that we've got to look at what, who we're protecting as far as the community, and, and I just, when I saw you that, I thought about any of you honestly that. think you're going to be able to have any effect here on what the pro They're just going to enjoy doing this again, publishing it again, and 
firing it up. It's erroneous information. That's and damaging opinion. to the community. That's not my opinion. opinion. It is erroneous information. Did you read the article? It's it's. You got it's, information. It's false. Don't worry though. Exactly. Yeah. But listen, that's why a, a reporter can't just go out and take information well, from somebody without corroborating that got, information with another person. He's got It's got to be factually correct, correct, Marlin. Getting into a contest. Getting in contest with it. With it. Wasn't factually correct. Newspaper is just not. Are you scared? Hell no. Okay. Just well, we need. Don't see any we need. As I just a don't. I board, do not see any need. Board, I, not I, Jeff Joe. I see. It, I do not see any need of wasting this taxpayer ratepayers Sounds money like protecting some um, frivolous lawsuits. I'm sure, you feel like it's frivolous. He's your friend. I, I know Jeff. I know him well. He's I, a friend of yours. I, well, and and that we're my opinion is, I believe you coordinate with the media with Jeff, and you do, you want to make sure that he has as much uh, believability I mean, as possible. I so that when the getting, next report comes is, out, this is a little bit of out of order here. No, it's not. I'm trying to figure out why it is that you're protecting somebody that you know said something wrong and did something wrong. I'm not we, protecting. We have I'm protect, you we know, voted Jeff, as a board. Jeff does not need protection. We voted as a board. <laughs> Get out of here. To ask for a retraction. You got it. Okay. You already did it. Now, he refused the retraction. Do we just stop because somebody's scared? Or do we continue on with whatever remedies we deem? You want to frivolously waste the taxpayer and the ratepayer's money here. I think it's more damaging and it's more costly to allow the media to report erroneous is, information than it is to look at what our remedies are. Uh, this is so as far, far as uh, moving forward past the request for retraction. All right, let's move on. Nobody put a motion on the table. Big openings? Okay. Uh, let's see, we've had a fair amount of activity, none of it over $20,000, so it didn't come before the board. Especially the land, we opened a bid at, uh, to get somebody to maintain our landscaping and didn't get a bid, so uh, we're going to try to rebid that. We opened bids on annual maintenance for the HVAC <laughs> systems in the building, and we got these bids. Uh, it's pretty clear uh, we need to give Knights Mechanical uh, this award because their bid is so uh, much lower than even the second place bid, so that's, that's what we're planning to do. Uh, that fits in also with a couple of months ago, I think in February, you approved the first round of some HVAC conversions going from the old 1967 system in, in the main part of the building to some smaller ductless heat pump systems. And we're, we've got specs ready to send out to do another round of those uh, conversions. Uh, so you'll see those bids coming in next month or the month after that. And then this next item is about uh, our organizational chart and retirements and hires. And as part of that process, uh, we have a couple of office changes that we want to do, and we'll put specs out on the street for that. It won't be a big deal, but uh, I'll probably run those bids by you as well. Uh, so here's the personnel update that I was talking about. And again, excuse me for this less than artful uh, graphic here. I did this a couple of years ago trying to look out into the future. The top lines, green uh, area heads represent hires and blues represent retirements or departures. Uh, and as Tag said, we've had a fair amount of retirements and a couple of departures uh, uh, where they saw the grass greener somewhere else. So here we are in 2019. Uh, of course, these two green areas were for uh, the superintendent and the attorney. And so the attorney has picked a place, so that's where that goes. And you all discussed this tonight uh, about uh, replacing him. Uh, so here's where we are. We just hired, this, this green arrow represents our most recent hire uh, to come in and to the accounting department and uh, help Melanie and her team out. So uh, her name is Kizzy Stockton. Uh, she's going to be coming in real soon, hopefully next week. So this continues. Uh, this uh, this continues on. I, I told the board that existed when I first put this together 
that these blue lines, these departures in this period of time, represent the departure of 500 years worth of experience uh, from this utility. So it's a very big deal. And we're trying to find uh, people and organize, reorganize the team, whether we consolidate some jobs uh, into what reflects as perhaps more economical for 2019 as compared to when we set up the present structure uh, a few years earlier. So I'll show you this every so often just to show you how the the projected departures sometimes are getting moved way over years ahead of when I uh, predicted them and it's just a big it's a big project that we continue to work on. That Mr. Chairman represents oh yeah now I didn't have this in the printed version if you all will allow me a little because this isn't an action item it's just a report but is it okay for me to talk about Proceed. this? Sure. Uh, we have an unusual situation, uh, I don't think anyone ever foresaw that the phone company could go bankrupt. But Windstream has in fact filed Chapter 11 and it's very complicated for us. This will be something that Mr. Herbert and whomever comes next will need to help me with a lot because we have a, we have a complicated relationship with Windstream. Uh, first of all, they're on thousands of our poles, and we rent space to them. So, joint use agreement is what they call. And vice versa, they own a few poles, and we're on them. Uh, and so annually, there is a settlement of uh, what Windstream owes us, also South Central, uh, others that attach to our poles. And uh, this year, in January, when we sent them the bill, it has gone unpaid. Uh, so we sent the bill in January, and in February they filed Chapter 11. So I have been working with Mr. Herbert trying to figure out what do we do next to try to protect something like $60,000 that they owe us. And it's just going to be a long process, whether we have to go through the bankruptcy court, whether we have to file a notice to them. I can tell you that the invoice that we sent them returned about two weeks later, addressee unknown. Uh, so that's another problem is that they're a big company that changes who is responsible for this and that fairly often. They change addresses and we have trouble making contact with them for contract level relationship stuff. So you'll probably hear more reports on that as we attempt to salvage that relationship. What chapter is this file under? 11, chapter 11. What organization? Yeah. Uh, so, that's it. That's all, all right. I've got for you, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.